Hello and welcome to my new channel. I'm Naomi, I'm a singer who sews, and for my first foray into making things in public, I decided it would be a good idea to film myself topless. May as well get it out of the way before I have to worry about losing ad revenue because this is a classic example of demonetization bait. Whew. Already, people. All jokes aside though, this isn't going to be that sexy of a video. But I would like to start out by giving a shout out to all my fellow busty humans <laughs> with a rundown of all the things I hate about modern bras and how I'm going to make it all better for myself. So if you're like me, you have realized or decided that being uncomfortable is simply not worth it. We'll blame the pandemic, but I've been feeling that way for a lot longer. Even with a well-fitting bra, and trust me, I know the value of a well-fitting underwire bra, I've been shopping specialty sizes since I was 16. You still have to buy a new one every six months or so when the elastic wears out, which for well-made bras in larger cup sizes like mine is a little too expensive for my salary as an adjunct professor at a community college. This bra is one of my newer underwires, but I've still worn it to the point that the underwire slides around if it's too loose, and if I get it tight enough to give me any support from the band, the underwire pokes me inside. And even though I still get a good bit of support from the band, the bra straps still dig into my shoulders. Not to mention, I think I've gained a cup size since I purchased this, and since my left boob is bigger than my right one, I get a little bit of spillage on that side. I also think it makes my breasts look even more enormous than they already are. I think this video is the first time I've put on one of my underwires in like almost a year. With my hate for underwire bras, I've been gravitating more towards those stretchy sports bras, which if you're busty like me, would never help in doing actual sports. Simply because I can't stand having my boob skin touch my torso skin. This is obviously an inadequate solution because I have to wear two bras that are each a size too small to get any sort of support. And the weight of my breast puts a lot of pressure on my trapezius muscles. You can see what this bra situation does to my posture. It's better than nothing, but it's still not good. I got into historical costuming for the bust support opportunities, if I'm honest. My first historical garment was a supportive 14th century kirtle which I dove into making as soon as I heard about the style in 2017 because I was promised a bra-free existence. Just for one day. Just for one day. So when I learned about the medieval bra found at Langberg Castle, I put it on my list immediately as a hopeful everyday replacement for the dreaded underwire in my wardrobe. The Langberg bra looks like this. Ooh. The garment was found during the reconstruction of Langberg Castle in Tyrol, Austria in 2008, stuffed under second story floorboards with around 2,700 other textile remnants and additional dry material. Judging by the architectural history of the castle and radiocarbon dating, researchers have dated these finds to about the middle of the 15th century. The second story of the castle was built between about 1480 and 1485, and the textiles were probably stuffed in there around that time. When the Elbra was discovered, it was big news, because this was the first 15th century supportive garment ever to be found that had separate boob cups, despite plenty of written and pictorial evidence that supportive shifts like this existed. Drawings and descriptions of supportive shifts and breast bags began to be pretty common at the beginning of the 15th century when the fashionable shape shifted from the monobosom of the late 14th, early 15th centuries towards looser styles that accentuate separate breasts. I've linked a paper in the description about the history and construction of the L bra as well as citations for written and pictorial evidence of similar supportive shifts and the gowns that were worn over them. The paper also includes a write-up of the reconstruction of this reproduction of the find made by Rachel Case. So, back in 2020, I finally got around to making my modernized reproduction of the L bra. My main resource in making this bra was Katrine's post on her blog, Catafalque, and the pattern she made. It's one of the most comfortable support garments that I've ever worn, and it works really well under my modern and history-bounding wardrobe. 
The problem with this one is that it kind of settles into this low kind of position here, and there's several reasons for that. One of them is that this cup isn't deep enough. See, I'm bulging out of the top here. So it wants to like sink down into the band when really it should sit underneath like a regular bra. See, when I do that, I've got spillage here. Um, yeah, so that's why this weird lacing gap happens because it's trying to fit too much boob into this cup. So without further ado, let's make a better one. The first thing to do is compare my existing bra pattern to my new kirtle pattern made in November. I need to increase the cup depth and lengthen the straps. On the front pattern piece, I should make the underbust band wider so I get an even lacing gap. Lower the arm side and extend the width of the upper front edge so the straps will be further apart. If I follow the drawn on line, the back pattern piece is almost correct, it's just a little long on the side. You'll notice the bra pattern is narrower than the kirtle pattern. This is to account for a lacing gap and the curvature of my back. There we go. Now that I know what's going on with my pattern, I can make the adjustments. I'll use the slash and spread method to keep the outer edge of the cup pieces more or less the same while lengthening the center seam to create a deeper curve. You gotta make sure that the pattern pieces line up. So I'm trying to rummage through my stash for pure linen scraps and I'm too efficient and none of these are big enough for any of the pieces I need. You know what I did find? My lacing strips that I used for my last mock-up. I can use these to test the fit on this one. So I found quite a bit of linen and I also found almost a complete yard of linen. It's the linen from Joann's which I don't recommend you buy unless it's at least half off because you can get better linen for the same price on fabricstore.com. But anyway, I'm going to see what I can get out of my little pieces that I found. Always iron before you sew. I'm gonna use this for straps. So an important thing to note about fabric is that usually it has more stretch, selvage to selvage, than it does along the length of the fabric. So for an item like a bra, you wanna make sure that your grain lines, especially on the cups, go along the direction of greatest stretch. So for that, that's selvage to selvage, and that way you have nice bias along the curves here, but it's also not gonna to be too restrictive on the up and down stretch of the cup. This is stuff I've just gathered from tutorials on the internet. Frixion pens, man. Frixion pens are the best because you can just iron the marks off when you draw on the fabric. I'm cutting a half inch seam allowance everywhere except the lacing edges, which get about an inch. I'm cutting the back piece so that the stretch runs horizontally, but the other pieces are cut so that the stretch runs vertically. 
This will allow the bra more give on the back, but help the front project the breasts more up and forward, since the weight of the breast tends to move in the direction of greatest stretch. Remember to flip it over so that you get two opposite ones with the um, markings on the correct side of the fabric, although it doesn't really matter with linen, so. Since I'm using the pattern I made last year, you don't get to see the crazy fitting process I had to go through to get the cup just the way I wanted it. Not to mention it was a little not safe for work. So here's some pictures of how I traced a modern soft cup bra to get the general cup shape I ended up with. Pro tip, make a boob hole pattern so you can trace your two circles. Finish the body pieces. I'm using twill tape for reinforcement. I highly recommend basting before you sew, so you don't have to worry about poking yourself with pins. I'll attach the twill tape along the top and bottom of the front piece, as well as the bottom of the back piece. I'll whip stitch along the outer edge and either back stitch or herringbone stitch along the inner edge of the tape. For some reason I decided to do this whole project by hand, but a lot of these finishing stitches can be done by machine if you want to do that. All the arm side edges are finished with herringbone stitch for flexibility. And the top of the back piece is just whipped down in a narrow hem. The wide seam allowance along the lacing edges is folded over twice basted and backstitched down with twill tape for reinforcement. Now for one of my favorite parts. Hand stitched eyelets. This bra will be spiral laced on the sides so make sure to keep the top and bottom holes aligned with each other and stagger all the holes in between. I was gonna try to make this really precise, but then I decided math doesn't matter right now. So, disregard this ruler. I'm just going to do it by hand, like so. By eye. Guestimate. And what I'm going to do after this is now space the ones on this side so that they fall right in between. By spacing it out like this, I have ensured that this is the origin point of the lace. It'll cross over here and then make diagonal lines toward the back until it gets down to here and it'll go in this one and the final point will be out the front of this hole right here. Then I can pull the cord towards the center of my back and tie a knot. And for my final trick, I'm just gonna copy these 
to the other side. It's an art, not a science. To make the eyelets, you'll need button thread, an awl, a chonky needle, and optionally, wax for your thread. First, poke a hole with the awl so you just push the fibers apart rather than breaking them. Try to hide your thread when you start. Put in a few whip stitches to open the hole. And then use the awl again to keep the hole big enough. Finally, make a lot of closely spaced whip stitches around the edge of the hole. And open it up with the awl again. If you cut the thread long enough, you can hide it between the eyelets like so without cutting the thread. After some practice, each eyelet can come together in less than five minutes. Pin the outer and inner cup pieces together, making sure to match the pieces correctly. Baste and then backstitch the pieces together. So I just had to rip out a seam because I'm not used to having to make sure that my stitches are looking the right way on the right side of the fabric because I usually stitch by machine, you know. So you see the two different sized cups here. Here's the inner cup, the outer cup. I want to make sure that the small closely spaced stitches of my back stitch are on the inner cup side and the longer ones that go on the back of the back stitch are on the outer edge of the cup because when I fell this seam, I want to fell it towards the outside of the bra because I've been told that's good tailoring practice and since I don't know any better, I'm just going to go with that. Here I'm matching the curves on the cup to the boob circle using a tiny running stitch to ease the fabric of the cup into the slightly smaller circle on the body of the bra. Lining up the cup seam with the corner of the top and perpendicular to the bottom edge of the bra. I personally find it much easier to attach the wrong side of the cup to the right side of the body with the boob hole intact. also learned I prefer pointing the pins toward the outside of the circle when I'm basting. Attach the cups using a back stitch for strength and flexibility. Maybe sewing outside for a change of scenery. To make straps, Take a strip of fabric a couple inches wide and a couple inches longer than the desired length of the strap. Fold the long edges toward the center. And then fold that in half lengthwise. and whip stitch that rectangle closed. If you're having trouble tensioning the fabric, here's what I did. Pin the straps to the front body piece, lining them up with the cup seam and the corner. 
I'm using a double thread to backstitch the strap to the outside of the bra. Okay, now you can cut out your boob holes. It's time for a fitting. Okay, this is the first fit test. Well, secretly it's the second one because I've already raised the straps a little bit and they're probably gonna come up a little bit more. I've got a little divot here, but my first bra also had that and it's relaxed out quite a bit. So I think this will be fine, even though you can see I've got kind of a weird shaped boob there. I'm going to move these eyelets over about an inch just so that I have room for the linen to relax. But it fits like perfectly right now. All of my bosom is inside the cup. And it's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. I was overconfident about my pattern being the right size, so I just had to rip out all my beautiful eyelets. But I do need to shrink the back piece so I could get a nice lacing gap. I'll also need to change the shape of the back arm side to match the height of the front lacing edge. I've learned my lesson. So before I commit to the new size, I'll machine baste my old lacing strips on to test the fit. Okay, second fitting is going pretty well. You can see I used those lacing strips from before, so the holes didn't line up, but you can see I've got a nice even lacing gap right there. This is still sitting really nice under the bust. The shaping is pretty good. The biggest problem I see is that there's too much bias stress right here and I'm getting saggy baggy underarms. So after I finish the edges here on the cups, I'm gonna add some more twill tape to this edge here and hopefully cinch that back up again and get some of that stretch out of the cup for a better shape. Now that I'm confident about the fit, I can trim and fell down the cup edges away from the cup and the boob hole edges toward the inside of the cup. I'll reshape my arm side by running a gathering stitch through the narrow hem, then I'll cut a length of twill tape Pull on a single warp thread on one edge and press that into a curve before I baste it to the bra. Attaching it with a whip stitch on the outer edge and a back stitch on the inner edge. Attach the straps to the back using a double threaded back stitch. Steam the cups to begin the seasoning process. And voila! Overall, I'm really, really pleased with my finished product. The cups are doing a really good job of containing my entire breast. The underbust band is a really good width, and I'm getting a lot of support from it. I also have a nice even lacing gap on both sides of the bra, which honestly will probably shrink a bit as the bra seasons to my body. I succeeded in getting the straps placed further apart, which will help when I wear it under my clothes. And look, no back rolls. I put this on and immediately my traps were like, whew, I can finally relax. They actually hurt really bad. <laughs> now it's time to complain about all the extra work you've been making me do by wearing those stretchy bras for an entire year. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are also a couple of cons to this design. The main one being that it's impossible to take it off unless I take off my shirt also. Eh, you win some, you lose some. The weird bust shaping I'm getting should season away, and as I've worn it a couple of days already, it's started to relax a bit and confirm my suspicions. Lastly, it sure isn't that sexy, but my best beloved cares more about my comfort anyway, so...
not a problem. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video to the very end. I have so many fun ideas and plans for this channel that I'm really hoping to get out, so I hope I can keep up the video making. I'm going to try to post on the last Monday of every month, whenever I can, so stay tuned. Like, comment, and subscribe, please. We'll get along real well, you and I. Eyebrows, eyebrows.